الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم من بعد Muslims were ordered to be one community to be unified because in our division we have weakness and when we are divided and when we have hatred and when we have racism and when we have those things which cause us to have enmity between us then we are weak and this is what all the evidence points to in the Quran and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what the salaf as-salih the pious predecessors were upon beginning with the sahaba of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and so unification is desired unification is our goal but however it is not unification by any means necessary which comes from ideology ideologies which are outside of Islam but rather the islamic unification comes about only through one way and it is through calling to the tawhid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by uniting upon what the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam united his sahaba upon which was iman and correct aqida correct faith purifying them purifying them with the Quran and with the authentic sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa ala alihi wasallam that's the only unification we can have as muslims and in the hadith of abi hurairah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam iftarakat al-yahud ala 71 farqa wa iftarakat an-nasara ala 72 farqa wa sataftariku hadhihi umma ala 73 farqa كلها في النار الواحد إن كنا من هي يا رسول الله قال ما كان ما كان على مثلي وما كان عليه وأصحابي اليوم كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. so the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in the hadith of Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه let us know that we would have these divisions and we would be in need of unifying. he said that the Jews they broke into seventy one sects and the Christians they broke into 72 sects and his community would break into 73 sects and he mentioned that all of them in the fire except one then his companions radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in asked who are they ya rasulullah and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam responded by saying those who are on what i'm upon and what my companions are upon today so this shows us that it is disliked in Islam to be divided but that those divisions would take place as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prophesied and he gave us the means for getting out of that division he said be upon my sunnah and that of my companions that is the way of success in another hadith narration of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam he said that tatabun as-salam man kana qablakum hudwa aw shabran shabran wa dhara'i wa dhara'i wa dhara'i hatta law dakhalu jahra dabbin tabatum tabatumuhu qul ya rasulullah al-yahud wa nasara qala fama so in this hadith narration the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam said that you meaning his community you would uh follow the way of those who came before you hand span by hand span arm span by arm span until they entered the hole of a lizard you would follow them or even if they entered the hole of a lizard you would follow them and then the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they said o messenger of allah the jews and the christians and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said who else so there again the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is letting us know that we would divide and that we would follow those communities that came before us the, like the jews and the christians and they divided into sects and they also went away from the call to the oneness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and went to shirk they went to polytheistic beliefs and tampered with the way of their various prophets and messengers 
عليه ما توا صلاة والسلام. And this is what the Muslims would fall into. But however, the Prophet وسلم, gave us hope. He said, "La tazal taifatu min ummati dhaanin ala haq, la yidurum min kha min khabalum hatta yatihum amr Allah, wuhum kadalik." The Prophet وسلم, said, "There won't cease to be a group uh, from my nation." which is clearly on the truth, and nothing would harm them. Even, uh, or nothing would harm them until uh, the Day of Judgment, and they'll still be on the truth. And this was collected in uh, Muslim. In another hadith, which also shows us the importance of being unified, and not despairing and giving up hope at that unification, and that that unification can only be upon the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and what his companions were upon, we see the Prophet وسلم, said, إِنِّي كَتْرَقْتُ فِيكُمْ مَا إِنْ اتَّسَمْتُ بِهِ فَلَنْ تُذِلُّ أَبَدًا كِتَابُ اللَّهِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَسُنَّةِ نَبِيهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم The Prophet وسلم, said in this hadith, also showing us the سَبِيلَ najat the, the way and the path of success. He said, I have left for you something that if you hold on to it, you will never be misguided. He said, it's the Quran, the book of Allah, and the Sunnah, or the way of His Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Again, the prescription is there before you. The prescription is coming back to the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. If we want unification, we cannot unify based upon this person is calling, on to, calling to Tawheed, and this person is calling to uh, extreme uh, extremism, for example. Or this person is calling to the truth, and this person is calling to being one with all the other religious communities, meaning that our, our, our belief is one. And we're all going to paradise. This is what some people call to and some people believe. They believe in the religion is one. And the only thing that's going to distinguish you is your deeds. But this is totally false and goes against all the, the evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And other groups, they call only to the prayer, for example. They invite their brothers and sisters to the prayer, which is a good thing. The problem is, is their foundation is not based upon the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, which is the real unification. Because you'll find that they don't really have true unity. That when they call all these people with different beliefs back to the masjid to pray, some of the people are still committing shirk. Some of the people still believe in grave worship. Some of the people still believe that they can make supplication to the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. But this goes against everything that the Qur'an and the Sunnah exhibits for us. All the evidences. And that's what we have to be concerned with. Our unification will not come about through our opinions. By just having a nice opinion. Hey, let's not talk about one another. No, that's not what the, the, the da'wah, that's not what the call to the Qur'an and the Sunnah is about. It's not about uh, harming your brother, no. But it's about distinguishing truth from falsehood. The reason that someone enters Islam is not because they say, Hey, I believe that uh, the, my former belief system was correct, but I'll be a Muslim too. No, that's absolutely unacceptable. They have to leave what they were upon if they were a, a, a Sikh before. They have to distance themselves from the belief of the Sikhs and come into true Islam, worshipping Allah and Allah alone, based on the Islamic understanding of monotheism. And based upon the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And this goes for the same for us that are in the religion. That there is no way possible to have unity. Except based upon the Qur'an and the sunnah and the way of the, pro the companions of the Prophet. That's the only possible way. It isn't just excusing one another of, uh, of our, our differences and agreeing upon and, and coming together upon those things we agree upon. Absolutely not. That qaida, that principle, is based on un-Islamic beliefs. Because the Prophet ﷺ never accepted shirk. He, he could have accepted king rulership. 
He could have accepted the most beautiful women from the Quraysh tribes. And he could have been a very high person in the eyes of the pagans. And, and they would have given him wealth if he, would have, he could have been on his religion as long as he didn't make refutation against their, their shirk and their gods. He didn't accept that. He knew that the dawah to haq, the dawah, the propagation of the truth, can never be compromised. That's what we have to realize. If we want unity in the community, we cannot compromise it. We can never accept innovation in the religion. Is this something, is this an opinion that I've come up with? Or, some, or, or a particular group of Muslims have come up with? Absolutely not. Let's go to what Allah says, if you have any doubts about what I'm saying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَاَتَّسِمُوا بِهَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَاسْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says in the Quran, He says, hold on to the rope of Allah, all of you together. This is us, ya Muslims. And do not divide. And remember the favor of Allah upon you. That you used to be enemies. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought your hearts together. And then you became, by His blessing, brothers. How many people do we know that were gangbangers? This person was a crip and this one was a blood before Islam. Pure enemies. Then they became Muslim and they were brothers united upon the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. That's what we're asked to do. We're asked to put aside our tribal differences, our colors, our nationalities. This one's African American, this one's Ukrainian, this one's Palestinian, this one's Russian, this one's whatever. That's not going to benefit you. When they put you in the grave, one day you will go to the grave. They're not going to, it's not going to benefit you, your Russianism. Or your, your Palestinian heritage. Never, ever. But it's going to, what's going to benefit you is did you hold on to the book of Allah? Did you hold on to the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam? Did you hold on to the religion of Islam in its correct fashion? Based upon Quran, sunnah, Quran and Sunnah, this is what you're going to be asked. Men Rabbak, Ma Dinak, Wa Nabiyak. This is the questions you're going to be asked in the grave. Those that comes from an authentic hadith of the Prophet about the questions of the grave. That either you'll be punished in the grave or you will have success and have a comfort in the grave. This is the the next stage before we enter the uh, the day of judgment or before we experience the hereafter. That's the life of Barzakh. That's your life when you end in this life. That's your next stage. Your next stage. So prepare yourself by uniting based on Kitab wa Sunnah. And know for sure that the only true unity comes from that. That that is the asas of Aqeedah. Hablillah al-Mateen al arwatul wuthqa That by uniting upon the foundation of the correct aqidah, correct belief, holding on to the rope of Allah altogether, the strong held uh, handhold that doesn't divide, then this is what's going to unite us. That we can only unite based upon calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. That it's not gonna, we're not going to be unified by having a unified plan to establish a khalifa. A khalifa is a means. By having a unified Muslim leader, this is a means. A means to what? A means to tawheedillah. When the Prophet ﷺ was asked about, about the person who fights for his sake in jihad, this is the hadith of uh, Abi Musa. Anhu. He said, Su'ila Nabi وسلم, an يُقَاتِلُ حَمِيَةً يُقَاتِلُ شِجَاعَةً يُقَاتِلُ رِيَاءً رِيَاءً أَيُّ ذَلِكَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ So the Prophet ﷺ was asked about the man who fights for bravery. He fights for his, uh, maybe his country or his, almost a nationalism and a fervor, out of fervor. Or, he, or the one who fights to show off so that way he can be uh, in, in the eyes of the people, held in high, high esteem. 
he, he was asked about these people. Which one is Fisa Bililah? Then the Prophet said, فَقَالَ نَبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ مَنْ قَاتَلَ لِتُكُنْ كَلِمَةَ اللَّهِ عُلِّيَ فَهُوَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَّلْ That the Prophet ﷺ answered by saying, The one who fights for the sake of Allah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, religion is, is utmost, then this is فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ Meaning those other ones have no benefit. So if you call, if you join a particular group because they call to the prayer, or these ones call to uh, make it to off around graves, or another particular group, they say, hey, we're, you know, it's okay, Sufism, we, we just believe like this and that, or our group name is this group, and our group we call ourselves this, and we call ourselves Asharis, and we uh, uh, belittle some of the, we, we reject some of the um, names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That that will never benefit you. Allah said, "Tasmu bihablillahi jamian." He said, "Hold all of you steadfast to the hope of, to the rope of Allah all together." Well, I tafarrakum and do not divide. Don't divide into new groups and sects. But know for a fact, ayyu muslimun, that you only get unity based on the Quran and the Sunnah and the uh, way of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And let's look at this last example that Allah gives us in the verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تُكُونُوا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ فَرَّقُوا دِينَهُمْ وَكَانُوا شِيعًا كَانُوا حِزْبِ بِمَا لَيْهِمْ كُلُّ حِزْبِ بِمَا لَيْهِمْ فَرَحُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse, He says, And do not be like the, uh, the pagans. Don't be like the pagans. Those who divided their religion and became and divided into groups and sects, every sect rejoicing with itself. Allah is prohibiting us from dividing and warning us that division will only get us the hellfire. By rejoicing in your sectarianism, this one saying, I'm Tabliki, this one says, I'm Sufi. This one says, I'm uh, Ashari. This one says, I'm Jahmi. I'm Murji. I'm Khawarij. I'm Takfiri. I'm with the Shabab. I'm with this group. I'm with that group. Wallahi, you'll never have success. I'm a Khwana Muslimin. Abadin. Unless you hold on to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam with the understanding of the Salaf al that's, that's it. There just isn't a way to sugarcoat it. That is it. Why? Because the Prophet Wasallam said, إِنِّي كَتَّرَبْتُ فِيكُمْ شَيْئَيْنِ لَن تُذِلُّ بَعْضُهُمَا كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَسُنَّتِي The Prophet ﷺ said, Verily I have left for you two things. Uh, that if you hold on to it, you will never be misguided. If you hold on to these two things, you will never be misguided. The Book of Allah and my Sunnah, my way. And what's the way of the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ? As we heard in the other hadith, it's what the, what the Prophet was on and what his Sahaba were on. So we have to go back to what the original affair was and the original understanding of Islam. That's the only way we'll have success. It isn't by new ideologies. It isn't by a new democratic philosophy. It isn't by a new all-inclusive philosophy where homosexuality is permissible and, and we can have a woman imam and we can do this and we can... No. That's, that's not the way of success. But our unity comes about through worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. That's the call. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَكَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةَ رَسُولًا إِنْ نَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَجْتَنِبُوا تَعْبُودُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets us know what our call is. Where do we start our da'wah? He said, وَلَكَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ And we have sent to every community a messenger proclaiming to worship Allah alone and freeing them, freeing themselves from those worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the call is to Tawheed. The unity is based on Tawheed. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and unite the Muslims based on Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and the understanding of the Salaf al salih And may Allah wa ta'ala forgive me for any mistakes I made and anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all the mistakes that I made were for myself and the shaitan. And may Allah wa ta'ala 
Bless us with the end that he was in Taibo, Amal and Mutakabidin, and forgive us of our sins. Wassalamu alaikum wa sallam ala Muhammad.